and welcome to another State of the Garden video with me, Tiffany, in the P&W. So, today is February 6th, 7th, 6th, one of those two, and it's kind of raining. It's not really warm, but it's not really super cold. A lot of stuff is going on in the garden, so I figured I would give a tour. All right, so hummingbirds are still hanging around. Those are Anna's hummingbirds. They, uh, they stay with me all winter. I think there's at least two, possibly three mating pairs hanging around. Um, just purchased that plant over there. That is a strawberry tree. Um, our Brutus Uniedo? I don't remember how to say it, but that's what that is. It's a strawberry tree and it's over there. Um, the Arbor Vitae's, Arbor Vitae's, however you say their name. I mulched them a few weeks ago and hopefully they'll do better this year. Um, those those poor plants were kind of doomed from the beginning because we just didn't water them enough and uh, we're hoping they come back. <laughs> um, right here are my button bushes. They're dormant still. Got a till fern, a couple of them. There's a, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember what it's called now, but I'll put it on the screen. Rhododendron, that was like one of the very, 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 very first plants I planted here. That little guy. I think he's going into his third year now. Um, Rose can't be on. And a couple of containers. That bed right there, what, right there, has a lot more in it this year than it did last year. Um, last year I had some uh, Wigelia, Wigelia, Wigelia. I don't know how to say it, but I'll put it on here so you can read it and you'll know how to say it. Um, I had a couple of those in there, and those were, um, I think, purchased at the same time as that rhododendron, but they just didn't do well. Um, they were too shaded here. So I moved them this year, and I've always had the rose campy on there, but I just um, put some lilies in there. Um, not just, but over the winter. And then I also put other things. Um, a calla lily? Yeah, I think calla lily and a bunch of stargazer lilies are in there now. So, um, the wagelias, wagelias, whatever they're called, I moved down to the corner of the fence. So, um, the containers, however, let's look at those. The containers have spring bulbs in them, fall bulbs. I planted them in the fall, they come up in the spring. Um, as well as a couple pansies that have held on since, uh, last, the beginning of last fall. Those containers have a solid layer of tulips in them. Um, and when I say a solid layer, I mean like I had to smush them to get them all to fit in one layer. <laughs> so they're gonna be really full of tulips and it's crazy. Every day I come out here and look, of course, and I'm noticing the soil starting to kind of do mounding things. So that's, uh, they're growing under there and it's very exciting because I planted them late. Um, but it was like the latest I could plant them. So they should still be good. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be crazy. I can't, I think there's 50 tulips in each pot and then also some alliums that I threw in there and there's already crocuses in there coming up. So <laughs> these planters are going to get wild and I'm excited about this. Speaking of crocus. The crocus in my, um, the little ring under my tree have started blooming. So there they are. Oh, there's a white one. I didn't see that one yesterday. That one's new. Very cool. Um, but there they are. I am having some slug issues in this bed. Um, I was kind of expecting one to be in there actually, but, uh, the slugs are eating them, but there's so many of them that I'm still seeing the flowers. Uh, I planted those last fall, 
like not the past fall, but the fall before this fall. So they went through one fall, um, just the singles, like I planted them. I didn't plant, I put, I didn't plant them in bunches like you should. I planted them singly um, because I knew that they would naturalize. I knew that they would spread and I wanted to get the best coverage I could right over time. So I planted them just individually. Um, I also did that because I didn't want a squirrel to come along and dig one hole and find three bulbs. I wanted him to dig one hole and find one bulb. So he'd find less bulbs obviously over time. So that's why I did that. And so this is their second season blooming. And this season they have multiplied, which is awesome. Um, you see how there's multiple plants now all smushed together instead of just one, um, which is super duper cool. Uh, here's a hydrangea that I planted uh, last fall. Mm. And it is coming back to life, which is exciting because I thought they died. <laughs> Because this ring does not get a lot of water because I suck and forget to water it. Um, there's still some pansies in here too. Those are those little sad looking plants you see. I think those are not best dirt. Um, and some of them have lived but they're not really flowering very well anymore. Uh, but yeah you can see all these little groupings and that's just in one season. Um, I think that's a, I don't know what that is. It needs some soil on it though. It's, all those roots are showing. Oh, I think that's a bleeding heart. Anyhow, yeah. So, oh, I love these purple ones. They're so pretty. These haven't really opened like they do normally. And I think it's because um, they only open when it's sunny. <laughs> and it has been very rainy and dreary. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but some's coming up there. Uh, this area my cat uses the litter box, so it's like a big dent in right there, and I just kind of let her do it. There's another hydrangea coming back, another purple one opening, some pansies that have quit blooming but are living, another hydrangea. Yeah, so the little, uh, little tree ring's coming back to life despite me completely ignoring it and really trying to kill it. Um, not trying to kill it, obviously, but you know, it should have died because it doesn't get a lot of rain on its own. You have to water it. But I fertilized it today. Um, and I should probably water it here pretty soon. Um, here are the camellias I got last year for my birthday. One is still alive, but um, it did not make any flower buds. So um, that's my fault. And the other one I thought was dead, so I hacked it back real severely. But it's putting out some green leaves. So, I don't know. Um, the reason those did not do well is because, once again, I didn't water them enough. You'll notice that the plants further from my house get less water, and you can guess why. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. So, remember that. If you're planting something that needs a lot of water, don't plant it very far from your house <laughs> or have something available for watering close to the plant at least temporarily at least for the first year so that you can water it easily because otherwise you're not going to water it and it's going to die I promise um, here are the wajelias that i moved um, they are alive despite looking otherwise they're just dormant um but you can I don't know if you can see that, but they have buds on them. They're doing well. I also um, pruned them when I moved them, so they got they got hacked and moved, but they are going to be fine. We'll see what they do here. They're going to get a lot more sun, so I'm hoping they bloom more than they have been in the past. All right, we're going to walk back to the border. It is really raining now, so I'm going to have to put my hoodie up. Um, let's look at the border. Right. So here's the garden, uh, the front. Uh, perennial slash annual slash everything border currently. Um, most of what you see there, most of the green, will be my daylilies that were given to me by a very kind neighbor. Um, this will be their second season. And then there's a few other little things going on in here, but you have to look more closely. So, we'll get down here. Notice all these little little dudes popping up all over the place. 
kind of blue versus green. Yeah, those are uh, all my stuff in dog poop. Yep, good times. Those are my fall bulbs coming up. And they're kind of spaced everywhere. So, they're uh, excited about them. I planted them in, I got poop on my shoe. I planted them in small groups on this side of the border and then I did bigger groups on this side of the border because as I was planting them, um, I became more lazy and decided to just throw more in one hole because <laughs> that way I could dig fewer holes. Also, I quickly realized that I had more bulbs than spaces um, to do the smaller groupings, so I kind of had to do the larger groupings. There are 150 bulbs planted in this border. Um, yeah, 100 of them are tulips and 50 of them are daffodils, but the daffodils were huge and they're naturalizing daffodils, so they'll, um, they'll do the same thing the crocuses did. They will double exponentially, whatever, each season. Um, so it's gonna be crazy as well. Um, not quite as crazy as the containers with the fall bulbs, but the border's gonna be nice. One thing though about the tulips, whenever I planted them, I had waited too long to plant them. So they did have some blue mold on them. Um, I did nothing to that blue mold. I planted the tulips that were still hard and said, good luck friends. Okay. So, that's what's going on there. Um, I've got a lot of stuff planted there that isn't showing yet. Okay, so, a couple other things that are coming up here. Uh, where is it? It's kind of hard to see. Oh, right there. That is a Crocosmia coming up, a Lucifer one. There's another one of those forward more, but I'm not sure where it is exactly. I don't remember. Um, it's not coming up anyhow. And then over there beside my druid friend, um, not the tree and not the daylilies, but the guy planted kind of directly to the druid's left, that is a, um, oh my goodness, Lobelia coming back. I bought that late last season, or last, the end of last summer, and it's coming back. Then there's the Rose Campion. Those are a couple of things that are already popping up. Um, we will go on into, it is really raining, the actual garden now. Um, and you can look at it. All right, so immediately walking in, we have sage and lavender. And then next to that are my irises. Um, I, they were given to me last year. It's about the middle of the summer. It was after their bloom time. Um, someone gave them to me because they were dividing them and I was at their house painting their house and I was like, oh, I like irises. And she was like, have some. And I was like, cool. So that's the story for those. I don't remember what color they are. So that'll be fun to find out. <laughs> Hopefully they'll bloom this year, who knows. Um, then directly in front of me are my strawberries. There's a strawberry patch. Um, don't mind the weeds. I've been kind of weeding, but not heavily kind of grabbing stuff every now and then. Here's the strawberry patch. It really hasn't um, grown much since I put it in, um, but there it is. I kind of cleaned it up the other day. There's my pond. I need to clean the filter. That's why it's not doing the fountain correctly. I also need to clean the fountain. There's a goldfish in there. You can see the goldfish. Um, I need to put fertilizer in there because about springtime. I need to start waking stuff up. Here's one of my raised beds. I did very recently go in there and level out the soil because I had had it in mounds. For the uh, melons and stuff that didn't work last year. Um, and then my comfrey's coming back. You can see it sprouting up. Comfrey, comfrey. Very exciting. I love my comfrey as you guys know. Um, so that's good. Um, my grids I have out because I'm about to put them back up 
and cover this with landscape, not landscape fabric, garden fabric, I forget what it's called. But it's breathable fabric that will keep it kind of warm and protect it from the birds and everything. And I'm gonna start my um, carrot and lettuce seeds, I believe, under that. Yeah, traps in some heat. Hopefully we can get stuff going a little bit earlier. Uh, here's my perennial bed. This is like one of the first flower beds I did. Uh, it's Shasta daisies there in the middle. There's some weeds. <laughs> Here is something. Gosh, I don't even remember what's planted in here anymore, honestly. I'll have to go back and look at the videos. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's sprouting back, so that's nice. Um, that one over there is doing some sprouting as well, it looks like. My time, my mother of time, not time, this is mother of time, is still alive. So, but yeah, I don't even remember what's over here anymore. I know last year I bought a bunch of clearance plants. Um, I think one of those is one, another one of those lobelias that I bought. I don't remember. It's a bunch of perennials that I threw in there last year. Okay, and then this bed is also currently empty, um, except for some weeds. Jesus. Little note about this this is called shot weed this stuff right here um it's actually already flowering and sending out seed um, not this particular plant but a lot of it in my area is so it's helpful to go out and weed right now um, so you can eliminate some of this this is edible y'all it's completely edible um, i'm not going to eat it right now because it has a lot of dirt on it but i hear it's rather tasty. I've never eaten it, but I hear it's good. So get out there, weed, rinse it off, chow down. Um, it sends out a lot of seeds, so the earlier you catch it, the less you'll have to deal with this particular um, invasive weed. Back to the beds. Um, there is some stuff in here. It's not necessarily stuff that like I purchased that. I'll give you the story. This leak. I bought at the grocery store for a meal that I made and it had roots on it and I didn't want to just throw it away so I used it and then I shoved it in the ground and it's growing. <laughs> it's about half the size it was when I purchased it. Um, same story with these onions. Those are green onions. And then that thing sticking out of the ground right there, I think that is a mosquito on me. No, it's not. No, it's not. That right there is a Brussels sprout from last year that I found in the compost, still living. So I threw it in the ground to give it a chance. I'll kick it out if it doesn't do anything by the time I'm planting these beds. Um, and that's kind of the same thing. Like I'll use that leak. I'll figure something out because this space is already kind of claimed. <laughs> so yeah, these are my. I didn't mean to plant them, but here I mean, they I meant to plant them but they weren't planned yeah so I also have a bunch of jugs in here and that's my winter sowing experiment um, it's actually doing pretty well so far I need to do a lot of weeding so don't when you see the weeds just mind your business um, here we are winter sowing these are my cardinal climbers you see there's absolutely nothing happening in there and that is fine because it's still quite early um, calendula Pretty nifty. Um, I planted this jug on December 31st, and this is what it's doing right now. I haven't done anything to it. I literally did it and sat it out here. Here is my um, dragon head bone. It's Moldavian dragon head bone. It's doing well. I uh, forget what this is, but it's not alive yet. I think it's a tomato. And here's another thing. It's not doing anything. Another thing. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, those are my some marigolds. I don't know. Nope, nothing's happening in there yet that I can tell. And then, let's see. Oh, more marigolds. And that's so cool. Um, those seedlings, the ones that are actually sprouted, they've been through a. Um, oh, it's so wet. My camera's wet. <laughs> That's not any better. Oh well, sorry. Um, they have been through 
frosts out here. It's It's got below 30 degrees um, a couple times at least, and they don't care. They're still kicking on. So that uh, the winter sewing is pretty nifty. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. You know, the stuff that's really tender hasn't germinated yet, so it, it knows what it's doing. I'm on board. I'm on board with winter sewing. I'll probably end up actually doing a few more of them, but then they won't really be winter sewing. They'll just be outdoor seed starting. <laughs> because it's kind of late to start any more winter sewing right. things. Uh, moving to the other side, these are my blueberry bushes. We planted these last fall. Um, it is a mix of Sweetheart and Duke blueberries. Um, I did prune them last fall and as best I could, it looks like I messed, I should have taken, done something with those two because they're gonna rub, but yep. They're doing well. They're all alive. This one looks like it's just about to start. Oh, it won't focus. But they look like the buds are about to open, which is kind of crazy because once again, it's February. Um, but because those buds are so swollen, I went ahead and fertilized them with some slow release fertilizer. Um, those plants, when we, not when we purchased them, but before we purchased them, they had a ton of blueberries on them. Um, my husband sampled them for you know a couple visits before we actually purchased them so uh, when we bought them they were all the blueberries were done but um, they're very productive plants and I don't know how old they are they're three or four years old at least and I'm like, they're gonna be fun this year you know they're they're new for this year we haven't had them through you know a season yet I'm excited about them um, I'm not really a huge blueberry fan myself, but I have a feeling it's because I've never eaten them off the actual uh, bushes. So I'll, I'll learn to love them, trust me. Uh, and finally, this is a new bed for this year. Um, oh my gosh, I have to get that. I'm so sorry. Hold on just one second. Oh, that's awful. Come here. I really shouldn't pull. I should just cut them, but I'm pulling, so you deal with it. Um, so this is a new bed for this year, and it's going to be a corn field, a mini corn field is the plan currently. Um, we'll see how it does. As I mentioned on my seed starting video, um, if I fail at corn again this year, I'm done with corn. I'm just done with corn. I'm not going to keep trying it and keep failing at it. So I'm stubborn, but I'm not that stubborn. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for the corn. It, it gets a lot more sun than it did, even though you know, it's just that far apart. Um, Cause I planted them in the raised beds last year. It gets a lot more sun. And um, I'll be able to plant more of it tighter and in the ground. So there's better nutrients, hopefully. And we'll just, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, wrapping back around the other side, here is my sumac. It is not alive. It did suffer an injury over the winter. My dog grabbed this and ripped it off for some reason. So I shoved it back in the ground, hoping it may just keep living, but it probably won't. I'll probably have to pull that piece out. And then here is um, a gooseberry my mother-in-law gave me. And it's not, it's not doing much yet. It's got some, uh, some little buds on it there, but it's not doing it much yet. Uh, final thing I'll show off in this portion. Oh, not the final thing, but one of the final things is this Indian plum that I found in the woods the other day. It is just about to open. It's so close. This is one of the first blooming trees of the spring in the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's called an Indian plum. It really shouldn't be right here in the middle of my yard uh, because it's a, an understory tree. It likes the shade, but um, I put it here, so we'll see what happens, right? But it's, it's, it's pretty and it's about to start blooming and I'm happy because the hummingbirds will like it. And it'll be cool, now I have like a, a, something I can look at to know when spring's coming. So the absolute final thing that I'll show you in this portion of the garden is my peony! I purchased this peony online from Walmart. Um, it was not actually sold by Walmart. It was just on Walmart's site. 
um, I had a Walmart gift card, so that's why, why I had to go through Walmart. But it's alive, y'all. Look at all that growth. Oh my goodness. You know? Ah, so exciting! I've never had a peony before. My mother has peonies. They're gorgeous. I love them. Um, and now I have one, and here it is. So, yay. I need to get a support for that peony here pretty soon because it's gonna it's gonna start growing and I want to put a support on it before I need one. Um, it is there against the fence, but I need something to hold it on the front side. So I want to put one so it'll already be there before I need it so I don't have to, you know, wrangle the plant into the support when it's already too big. Um, just a couple more things to show. Thanks for sticking with me so far. <laughs> I know it's a little winter, but things are happening, so I'm excited. Uh, yeah, let's go to the back. Um, there's that tree, the Indian plum. It's just on the outside of my fence there, right next to where my corn gets a lot of sun. So if it dies, it dies. Or, you know, there were a lot more of them in the area I grabbed it from. So uh, compost, I used all that compost up. That was last year's compost. That's an empty stall. And then that's my compost so far for the next spring. Um, I stirred it the other day. I just put that rose campy on up there. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Let me show you something hiding in the compost. Right here is a rose bush that I have started. Um, I started this because I pruned my roses and I just threw the pruned branches into my compost. And when I came out a couple weeks later to put stuff on the compost, I noticed that the rose had started putting roots down. Like there were roots coming out the side of this branch. So I threw it into soil and there it is. Um, I don't remember if that shoot, if that particular branch came from below the rootstock as a sucker, you know, or above the rootstock as the actual rose that was grafted onto the rootstock. Um, it matters because the rootstock will be one type of rose and then the graft that's stuck onto the rootstock will be a different kind of rose. <laughs> so I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it's gonna be, but we'll find out. Oh, there's the rose. It looks kind of weird because I've just started training it. Um, if you pull them sideways, the shoots will grow up and then you can, you know, that's, that's the idea, and that's what I've started doing with that one. It's not really um, doing much right now. It's just, it's just hanging out. Not quite awake. I mean, it has some buds on it, but it's definitely not awake yet. All right, y'all, we're almost done. I'm going over to where I feed the wildlife in my yard now. Um, I purposely feed them away from my other garden plants because the idea is if I feed them away from everything, they'll stay over here and they'll leave my garden plants alone. <laughs> um, it's worked so far. So I'll just show you the area right now. Um, that's my brand new bird feeder pole, which I'm very excited about. Um, the feeder's already had, but the pole is new. The baffle is new. Squirrels can't get up it anymore. It's at least yet. Yeah, I'm sure they'll figure it out eventually. But yeah, it's a lot, a lot safer now, which is awesome. Um, that circle right there is a mock orange that I planted. It was right around, oh, I don't remember. It was whenever my mother was up during the summer. So it might've been in August. I actually don't remember July. Oh, I'm awful. I don't remember when you were up here, mother. May? I don't. I don't know, no, I was in, I don't remember. But anyhow, I planted it last season and it was after it had flowered. So this will be the first season that it'll be flowering here in my yard. And they smell so fantastic. Oh, I can't wait for it. It's, oh, I can't wait. My bedroom window is right there. So whenever that blooms, it'll be warm enough that I can open my window and the smell will blow into my window at night and it's gonna be fantastic. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, so that's the mock orange. My mom bought it for me while she was up here. Okay. Quick closer look at the bird feeder setup. It is freaking awesome. It's just so cool. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. There's the mock orange. Um, it's not really 
It's still pretty much asleep, but it's, it's starting to kind of test the waters. It's putting out little, little, uh, little leaves. I just put some fertilizer around it this morning. Oh, there's Chickadee. There's Chickadee. Alright, um, yeah, this area I just moved the bird feeder away from, so that's all uh, black oil sunflower holes. <laughs> So that time, it'll, it'll take some time to recover over here. Um, I need to clean that, don't look at it. And I'm gonna eventually put a new bed along this area. Can't do it just yet, but I will eventually. And then over here, final thing. Here is a button bush that um, I pruned those button bushes and so I tried to propagate and there it is. It was alive last year, um, so I'm hoping it wakes up when the other one does. These wake up really late, like they're the last thing to wake up in the summer, so um, I won't know for a while if it made it. And then here was a plant that I got from the same woman that gave me the irises. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it's doing. It's like going in both sides here. I'll just leave that alone. I'm just gonna leave it alone. We'll see if it comes back. I don't know if that's even that same plant. That might be something else. But yeah, that's, that's the state of the garden currently, y'all. Um, things are waking up. I think the groundhog is right. Uh, I think it's gonna be an early spring. Um, I may be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Thanks for watching my video. Feel free to give me any suggestions. Tell me what's happening in your garden and have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for watching y'all.